Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This week I bring you something different, I'm going to be reviewing my own laptop. Before I tell you all about my laptop, let me tell you why I decided to buy it. Before having this laptop, I only had laptops which my father would give me that he would not use anymore. This was bad for two reasons. First of all was the fact that his computers are not powerful enough to handle my CAD software. So my 3D modeling software would be too heavy to run on his computers. The second of all is the fact that if my father's computer would get ruined for some reason, I would need to give him the computer that I would be using at the moment because it would be the computer which would be the closest to the one he was using in terms of specs. This made me want to buy my own computer. Not only this, I also needed a computer because finalizing my masters, I'm at a point in my career where I need to have my own workstation. And I do prefer something mobile instead of having a home PC. When I was looking in the market, I had four things in mind. Memory, storage, processor, and the most amount of screen possible. I had some brands in mind. Some of them were Asus, Dell, Alienware, ROG, which is also Asus, and HP. I chose specifically the ZenBook Pro Duo 15 because it has a 12th generation i9 processor, which is really quick, especially in my 3D modeling. Complementing the processor, there are also 32 gigs of RAM. This is a lot of memory and it means the computer can really handle heavy tasks, such as rendering animations, which can sometimes blue screen your computers. There was also the need for storage and this computer has one terabyte. I have my personal hard drive, however, I needed space in my computer so I could download all the programs that I need and the computer will still run smoothly. And last but not least, and probably the main reason, was the amount of screen it has. It has two screens, one 16 inch screen and another bottom one, which both are touch screens as well as compatible with the stylus. But let's start with what comes in the box when you order it. Alongside receiving the computer, you receive a magnetic case for it, which is luckily waterproof. You also receive a stylus so you can draw on your computer. It's really good if you are either a designer or an animator. You also receive a hand rest due to the location of the keyboard on the computer. Some people might feel like their hands are not supported enough since there's no computer surface to put your hands on. So they're kind enough to include that in the box. And of course, the main thing if your computer runs out of battery, a charger. Starting with the outside of the computer or its hardware. You have a 3.5 mil headphone jack entry, which is really important if you are a video or sound editor and you really need those crisp sounds and you want to plug in your professional headphones, it gives you the possibility for that. There's also an HDMI entry, which nowadays seems to be rare, especially in the slimmer computers and you always need to have an adapter for it. So this having it just proves it's made for creators and it's made for you to connect it to a TV really quickly. It has one USB type A and two USB type C entries. This makes it really easy for the computer to accommodate a variety of devices. Usually I have my mouse, then I have also my hard drive, sometimes I even have a charger plugged in there to charge my phone. It gives you a lot of variety in what devices you can have communicating with your computer at the same time. However, I do need to admit I would prefer to remove one Type-C inlet and substitute it by a Type-A USB inlet just because most of the hard drives and disk readers and everything are still USB type A and therefore you would need to buy those adapters. And you might be thinking, well, it's missing the number pad because all the computers have a numbers pad on the right side and you only have a mouse. Well, when you click on this tool, you can see the mouse pad lights up with the numbers and becomes the number pad. You can change the brightness of the numbers right here. It has three settings and it makes the mouse pad 
pretty much just a multitasking tool and it pretty much just solves any problem with cluttering that would happen in a normal keyboard. Now for the top screen or the desktop screen features as Asus refers to it. This is a 16 inch 120 Hz OLED display. There are smaller versions with 13 inch displays. However, I wanted the bigger one and I said either go big or go home and I need the amount of screen so I can really see my products in detail and have the most amount of tasks running at the same time without having any trouble seeing all the details. This screen is also really good if you are someone who is really focused on coloring your projects because it has a 100% sRGB. This means it is able to reproduce all of the 16 million colors present in the sRGB triangle. Moving on to the bottom screen and most likely what makes this computer something brand new and out of the box. This screen also has sRGB 100. However, it is only 60 Hertz. Compared to the desktop screen, this screen has an anti-glare protection. This is due to the amplitude at which the screen is angled at you. Because the screen is pretty much turned towards the ceiling instead of towards you, most of the lights that are on the ceiling will be reflected on it. And if it had the same finishing as the desktop screen, you wouldn't be able to see the screen. In sort of comparison, it's for example, when you are playing a video game or you are watching TV, and you have this light coming from behind you onto the TV, that can make it difficult to view the content, but after two or three games or one movie, you're already used to it and it's like it's not even there. This bottom screen, just like the desktop screen, is stylus compatible as well, which means you pretty much have the whole computer to draw with your pen. And this screen does have a really good feature, which is a controllable taskbar. This taskbar can include anything from changing windows from bottom screen to top screen in just a mere seconds, makes it really quick. You can also operate the microphone and the camera through there, make sure they're turned off, it's always shown on there. And you also have plenty of other features, such as when you are drawing on the bottom screen and you wanna lay your hands or your arms on the keyboard, you can lock the keyboard so it's not active and it does not disturb your drawing session. These two screens together have another really good feature, especially if you use, for example, Adobe Premiere or any other video editing tool. It allows for a full screen environment, which means it basically merges the two screens together and gives you a huge squared screen. This makes your experience for editing a lot more entertaining and you feel a lot more involved. Especially because most of the times it is able to separate the video on the desktop screen and on the bottom screen you have all your timelines so those are on separate screens and you do not have to make your video screen smaller and therefore maybe not see all the details in it. Another important part of the hardware is the battery life. If you are looking for something that you are confident you can always take it out of the house and be sure that it will never run out of battery, you might not wanna opt for this one. Because of having so much screen area and therefore having probably less internal space for components such as battery, this computer does have less battery life. On a good day, if I'm only using Microsoft Word and one of the screens is turned off, I can do seven hours on it. However, if I am using both screens and I have my 3D Mobile Link software open plus Google Chrome, I'll give you two and a half hours before it runs out of battery. However, this can be improved using the My Asus app. The My Asus app is present on all Asus computers and it pretty much has a set of configurations where you can personalize your computer, your software, etc. However, it does have one really good thing for the battery life. It has free settings for your charging. You have 100%, which is when you are planning to go out all day and you want the computer to be fully charged up. You have 80%, which is balanced, and it's pretty much doesn't fully charge up the battery, so it doesn't damage it as much, and your battery lasts more time. And then you have the 60% of maximum life capacity. This only charges your computer up to 60% and is designed for you to keep your computer as a fixed home station. You can keep your computer plugged in all day long and what the smart charging does is it pretty much just 
makes the charging fluctuate and the battery fluctuate from 60%, 59%, 60%. Always keeps it in this range because this is the healthy range for a battery to last a long time. Now, more for creators like myself, you have the ProArt Hub. The ProArt Hub is specifically designed for creators who want to see how they can improve their computer's performance focused on their tasks. This can vary from changing the speed of your fans to changing even the layout of the helping tools that you have on your bottom screen. If you, for example, have Photoshop or you have Premiere, it's really good to have this computer because on the bottom screen, using the ProArt Hub, you can add a set of dials and levers to either snip, mute, cut, delete, rotate, anything that you want, you can add it on the dials down there. Makes it really versatile. In a way, I believe this is a way of Asus sort of recreating their amazing dial that they created for the first Pro Art series of their VivoBook computers. These were amazing and apart from having just the mouse pad that you would have on your MacBook or something like that, they have a rotating dial which allows them to pretty much scan through footage very quickly or rotate things very quickly. It's a multitasking dial. I do prefer this because you are able to add how many dials you want, how many levers you want. There's really no limit apart from the space you already have on screen. So I feel like you have a lot more versatility. This makes this computer perfect for creators. Even if you are a 3D modeler like myself, if you are a video editor, if you are a photo editor, if you are a logo creator, this computer gives you all the tools and the space and the screen necessary for you to become successful at what you're doing. On another note, I do believe there are some things that this computer could have improved. Compared to the ROG Zephyrus, 16, which is the same computer except the gaming version, there is a lot more entries for air and for cooling. For example, underneath the screen, you have two big fan entries that suck up a lot of fresh air, making the cooling a lot better in my view. I do believe they could adopt that chassis onto this one. Of course, I haven't developed the computer, so I'm not really sure. Maybe there's some internal components that this one has that the other ones don't that make that impossible. But if it is possible, I would like to see that happen. Another thing is the screen gap. If you are standing straight in front of the computer, the gap is not noticeable. However, if your back is a bit straighter or even if you are on a tall chair, you are sort of looking over the computer and therefore the gap is really noticeable. This could be improved with the GAN, the gaming version of this computer, which has the bottom screen sliding all the way to connect with the desktop screen, making it seamless and I do believe that would be a really good innovation for the next series of this computer. And last but not least is the difference of brightness. You might have noticed it in the video. The maximum brightness on the top screen is brighter than the maximum brightness on the bottom screen. It might make it hard sometimes, if, especially if you're in full screen, because in one screen your app is really bright and the other one it seems like it's dimmed down a little. If you are using separate apps, it doesn't really matter, you won't really notice, but I thought this should be something that if you are considering buying the computer, you should know that the screens do not have the same amount of light in them. As you can see here, I am able to run seven apps at the same time. I usually just use Spotify on the small left hand corner of my bottom screen and then I use the other two thirds of the screen for my Google Chrome and then I have half of the top screen for my 3D modeling and the other half either for PowerPoint or Microsoft Word. If I don't need to use any presentation tools, I just put Google up there and I might use the two thirds of the bottom screen for my sketchbook and designs just to sketch a bit all my 3D models. Once again, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's something different. It's something that takes more time to do and more time to edit. So I do really hope you see the improvement in the videos. I also changed my setup a, a little bit so it could improve your experience. If you do like my way of reviewing stuff, please leave a like or leave a comment. 
just so I know you are interested in it. And if you want to see any other products, maybe a setup review or if you have any other things that you'd like me to review, please subscribe and drop a comment and I'll see you in the next time. Bye guys.